So since, yeah, my talk is about this, uh, the last talk of the day, so I'd rather start on time. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming. And my name is Jessica Zhang. I'm a software engineer at the Intel Open Source Technology Center, working on the Yakto projects. So any of you that uh, is currently using Yakto projects? Cool. And then this, I'm guessing the rest of you is more uh, interested in this, uh, the development tool size. That's uh, what we're doing there. Okay. So my talk is about this, uh, uh, the modernized uh, the development tools that's, uh, to allow you to achieve the development anywhere. So you know this, uh, with the embedded, uh, the Yakto projects this, uh, is one of Linux foundation this, uh, projects and you heard in this uh, the today's keynote, Sema mentioned that uh, yeah, the starting of the project is trying to this achieves this uh, uh, standardized way for people that uh, to build and customize their uh, embedded software, this uh, uh, distributions and the BSPs. So the Yakto projects currently, this we are we just released uh, last Friday uh, on the 18th, which is our uh, 1.5 release. So that's. Uh, our sixth release, so we have this six months this, uh, uh, release cadence. So currently, that's pretty much the Yakto project overall is becoming this, a de facto, this, uh, the build system of the way for people to build their embedded softwares. But this, uh, uh, to allow uh, the Yakto projects provide you the capability, the feature, that's one uh, aspect of the Yakto projects. And on the other end, this, uh, to uh, help people, especially software engineers, this, uh, uh, give them the right tools and continue improving the tools to allow them to efficiently this, uh, uh, doing this uh, software development is also one of the goal of the Yakto project. So this talk's going to yeah, focus on that so was the latest effort so we are trying to achieving that goal, continuously improving and achieving that goal. So my agenda is this, uh, uh, I'm going to this, uh, start give you some context of what are this, uh, uh, the feedbacks we hear as far as the how to continue uh, improving our tools offerings. And then this, uh, I'm going to talk about two, this, uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, activities this, uh, in that area that's, uh, yeah, where this currently this uh, put resource in uh, or this, uh, doing this uh, proof of concepts works and uh, starting this, uh, the, the way that's towarding this uh, uh, modernize the tools offerings allows people to achieve this uh, development anywhere. So there are mainly uh, three pillars of this Yakto project's offer. The, the core is the build system, which is this, uh, the bit bake. So basically, that's the engine allows you to this, uh, yeah, to chunks out this, uh, the customized, this embedded systems that you want to this, uh, uh, build for your uh, device, for your targets. And then the uh, second one is the contents. So Yakto projects, this we have this uh, the layer this approach. So in in the core we have this OE core. So that's the other fundamentals and all of this, uh, the features, the additions, and all this, uh, the customizations is through this uh, uh, extra layers, the meta layers that the people, the companies add, and all the Yakto projects add, categorize them. So that's the layer approach, and also this, uh, uh, the content part contains the, the BSPs that uh, we uh, help people and also support. So the third pillar is this what we said, uh, I just mentioned, this, uh, the developer experience is very core to the Yakto projects because it's not just the build system, the content allows you to build out, and we truly believe this uh, provide the right tools for people to do to help people do their jobs more efficiently is also a part of our mission as well. So the the pr whole project is a, a Linux Foundation project, and so it's a pure open source, <coughs> and that's give you this uh, yeah it's. If you think like uh, it's as a big globe, and also this, uh, the modularized approach, all this, uh, the framework we set up, the projects, like, uh, the, uh, the layers, and 
lots of things. So then this uh, allows us to keep adding this, uh, yeah, missing pieces and improving this, uh, yeah, connections of the pieces. So keeps the keeps <laughs> keeps the whole globes continue evolving and growing, and so that uh, people can continue benefit from the projects, and also that people can continue contribute to the projects. So with that said, and uh, definitely this uh, Yachto project already gets uh, already <coughs> this, uh, lots of uh, attractions in the industry, especially the embedded world. But uh, there's still this, uh, some limitations of this, uh, the current usage model for this, uh, people using Yachto. Uh, yeah, the best is the single user because originally this, uh, the open this embedded and the bit big is target for the personal build system. And also, this everything is this uh, uh, for people. This definitely need for the embedded uh, Linux. So it start with uh, Linux. So currently, it is only support as this uh, uh, li if Linux is your this uh, main development host environment. So with that, and also this uh, uh, with the more and more adoptions of the Yakto projects and we starting hearing this uh, uh, feedbacks of people comes to us and asking us this, uh, okay, so I my personally this, uh, can run a bit big build, but for a group of people I'm working with, uh, especially with a larger corporate or something, and people start asking this, uh, how to the best practice to share the bills and especially uh, now that uh, people are so distributed and was is a distributed groups of engineers that share the bills allows them collaborate and doing the customization and then this uh, continue this improving the, this build so that's one of the uh, uh, que questions that uh, we've been asked a lot and the other thing is this uh, uh, we did a survey, and uh, we know lots of people. This, uh, uh, especially this, uh, when we att attending a conference like ELCE, lots of people this, uh, have no problem. They even told us, "Oh, don't bother about any user interface. I'm perfect fine oh, with the command line. I'm cool with that." And uh, yeah, don't bother. Linux is the only thing I touch. But when we this uh, uh, expanding this. The Yakto, this award, the people using Yakto, there's some groups of this engineers. This uh, they says, mm, my this uh, mainly this working environment, unfortunately, is not Linux. It's either this a personal preference. Some people this uh, I know this uh, lots of engineers that uh, they prefer to use uh, Mac, and others people this uh, if they have a corporate this uh, a setup their IT the setup is mainly the Windows. They say what if then I but uh, my job is require me to develop software for embedded. Then this uh, what should I do and what how can I take advantage of the Yakto projects? So with that bear in mind. We start the following this uh, uh, two projects. Uh, one actually, this uh, one is a new project, and one is an uh, improvement of our uh, this uh, uh, current Eclipse plugin. So we start this uh, trying to this uh, uh, with these two this uh, uh, efforts. We trying to fill those missing pieces this uh, of the the globe. So first, I'm going to talk about this uh, toaster projects uh, with of. Uh, you that uh, have exposed or uh, uh, knowing or uh, using Yakto projects, you probably have heard this uh, uh, the Hub Two. So basically, the Hub Two is a graphical user interface tools. This uh, uh, of the Bitbag allows you to this uh, uh, customize that you build. That's one of this. Uh, uh, the, t the creation of the tool is the originally that's the one we said that's the bit big everything you need to write your recipes and lots of people saying that's a big learning curve and I just want something really quick kind of like allows me to add a package and the kick off the bit big build and then that's a, my image will be updated. So that's how we start with this hop to this uh, quickly give people this allows them to this uh, uh, bootstraps on the Yakto projects and start doing something and while this, uh, they're using the hub doing their this, uh, 
jobs or tasks required, they pick up the knowledge so they can switch to the command line to use the full bloom of the uh, bitbag uh, features. But then the, the hub is based on the GTK. So it's a GTK based the, the graphical user interface. So definitely that's quite outdated. And then there's a one we said that people come to us saying, oh, do you have a user interface tools allows us to this kind of collaborate running the build uh, better that's a if this is we can access is over the internet then this a the hub is out of the picture and continue investigate in hub it just doesn't make sense so with that a requirement especially this a mainly on this a uh, uh, a tool that's a with a graphical interface to the bit big and uh, allow people to be able to run the build anywhere that's that doesn't bound to this uh, uh, a Linux that's a uh, machines, then that's kind of like pretty much give us the idea, hmm, maybe that's a, for this, a, the future hub, we need to create a something web hub. So that's, yeah, that's a, now that's a web hub is the idea, and now that the name is called Toaster. So this give us this, a, yeah, definitely much more than nice, the look and feel, and, and also this, you know, this a, with the internet application, so we just basically this build this toaster is as long as the uh, web-based application. So you know this internet already has this a uh, very feature-rich this uh, uh, frameworks. So we just take advantage of the established this uh, technologies. Just add the features in there. That's uh, Yakto. That's uh, features in there which is, should give us a very this uh, rich and full bloom this uh, applications that uh, many people can benefit. And also, uh, the other this mistakes or uh, lesson learned from the hub is it started as we heard people saying uh, bit big command line is just a big learning curve. And so then uh, we inside as engineers, we start cooking something that's as a graphical uh, user interface. But we just omit this uh, one very important part of this hub is a really user needs this a lot of user interactions tools. So there's no any this, uh, design designer that's involved in this development hub. So then there's definitely there's a big gap that's, uh, of the hub we can uh, like introduce as a user interface to <coughs> user interaction tools and uh, the usability wise and the flow wise. It's just, yeah, lots of things and people give us the feedback. It's just not intuitive and it's, yeah, lots of things, lots of gaps there. So uh, since we set the goal of this, the web yeah, application is a long-term and future this, uh, uh, thing, that's a feature uh, we want to go. And so then for this uh, toaster projects, at the beginning on, we start engage this uh, professional uh, design for firms and also in-house this uh, user interaction, this uh, design expert to, yeah, this doing this, this uh, uh, interviews, and so provide us, help us build this, uh, the roadmap, the uh, usage flow, and this, uh, the user interface. So this, uh, the web hub is not just purely a replacement of the, the hub. It's really this, uh, we think this, we are going to make it this, uh, more like a center, this, uh, like a dashboard, the centerpiece of this uh, uh, a tool that allows people to run the build and provide you this uh, the one thing we think that's uh, definitely based on this all this uh, uh, interview with the customer. One of the biggest advantage of these toaster projects is which this uh, definitely the bit big uh, on the command line cannot provide you is the build analysis this. Uh, uh, capabilities provide you with the uh, web, with the way it's keep, uh, it can present the, those kind of like data and graphics in all kinds of charts and give you the information and also provide you the visualized of this, uh, uh, the build, the dependency of the packages, the recipes. That's the part, the, the key part that's one you that's really that's interacts with this, uh, yeah. Uh, the Yakto projects, the bit big, lots of people just say that's always a kind of like black box to me. And uh, yeah, so to uh, Toaster definitely can fill that gap. 
So this, uh, based on this uh, uh, research works, this, uh, uh, the design forms that uh, help us then. So here are the roadmaps and uh, implement we identify this uh, roadmap and uh, implementation approach we are going to take. So, you know, this, uh, with the highway system, there's a ramp and there, there's the freeway. So the ramp gets you onto the freeway. Ide uh, ideally, this, uh, yeah, that's uh, we need to provide. So this, uh, the toaster, one of the main goal of the toaster is quickly ramp up the new users to fully take advantage of the Yakto projects. But the one of the uh, the challenging is then that's a uh, yeah that's kind of like the whole thing has to be mature enough to this. Uh, to, yeah, this uh, allows you to get to there. So, which this in the first uh, incarnation is hard for us to achieve this capability. So we then this uh, we decide on this. Uh, yeah, the initial iterations will take this uh, free, freeway, freeway first. This uh, uh, approach. So basically, this give you this uh, the per delivering the uh, existing use case to the existing Yakto project users. So this allows uh, at least this uh, uh, first lay the foundation and also this, uh, deliver this, uh, the values to the immediate user, existing users, and also attracts people, yeah, contributes this early on and uh, help us build up the ramp and build up the whole freeway system. And the implementation wise, we are going to this, uh, uh, do the inside out. So the, what does it mean is we are going to focus on the core capability first. So this, the core is allows you to specify and to run a build. And also, this, uh, as mentioned, this, uh, the biggest this, uh, uh, improvement, this, uh, all the values that uh, we heard based on the community survey is yeah, allows to people that's uh, doing the build analysis and also the image analysis. So once that, and, and then even for those kind of initial features or capabilities, it definitely involves a couple iterations and refinement. Once that's stabilized, then we just kind of like, that's our core, and we starting this evolving it, allows starting this uh, talking about this, uh, the project support, allows a group of people of yeah, the community how to collaborate on pro projects, and also there's a uh, there's another there's a requirement. Yeah, the public toaster. So fundamentally, that's we set up this uh, public infrastructure. That's for anybody can take advantage of it, and just as a bootstrap, <laughs> I'll, I'll have a first taste of the Yakto projects, uh, run build, and do some customization and do something. So you see, that we have a very big ambitions for the toaster, but yeah, we have to start with the core first. So this is, yeah, the roadmap, the, the design forms that helps us comes up. So you don't need, I know it's a really fine print and probably you cannot read it. But it's just showing you. So everything here are the, uh, the core features. They uh, help us identify the long term, this, uh, the whole roadmap of the toaster. And then things are break into stages. So then this, uh, this just yeah, provide us the guidance. So we deliver the core. And then this, uh, on different stages, there's an iteration of the core to get it refined and stabilized. And on top of that, we add yeah, there's uh, more and more features. So towards the end, make it full bloom. So this is, I just want to show this. The whole project is very systematic and uh, we investigate lots of this, uh, yeah, resource and put lots of thought the behind the scene, that's uh, how to this, uh, make sure is achieved this uh, our goal, this high goal that we set. Okay, so that's the, uh, the overall, that's, uh, of this, uh, the toaster projects we have in mind and that the guidance, that's how we are going to implement it. So now back down to this uh, ground zero, what we have done so far. So this is a diagram and also this, uh, uh, in the middle is the, the bulletin items captures what is the, the core frameworks and this of this uh, toaster projects, which involves uh, the top part capture this, uh, the things that uh, we 
either add it or this, uh, refine for the existing this, uh, the bit bake this, uh, uh, this uh, yakto uh, the core piece and then this, uh, uh, the bottom part is the main components key components for the uh, toaster that uh, we lay the foundation and then we continue on refine them and improve them. So uh, first of all, a, you know, as I mentioned, the bit bake that's uh, currently that's, uh, is much more like a personal that's a build system. So even though it uh, has uh, XML RPC support and the some that's a level of that's a client server, yeah, that's a support. But then with this uh, uh, the one five uh, this, uh, initial release, we made lots of changes in this, uh, the big, big core part, so make it more robust, uh, behave like a server. So then we make the server res resides in memory after it starts, so make it kind of like deep and nice, it allows this uh, continuous connect to it. Otherwise, yeah, currently, this, uh, if you run a build, you start the big bake, and then this, after the build, the big bake just dies, it's finished. And then there's a, we, yeah, there's a, to better support this, uh, the client server model, we also improved the XML RPC interfaces. And then we introduced this uh, as a client server. So then the bit bake, so uh, as I mentioned, there's uh, lots of things, the new, this, uh, thing or new features for the initial release of Toaster without this, uh, it's, most needed feature that the people of value add people have been asking for is the build analysis, the uh, the build out, the build analysis plus the build out analysis. So that requires we need to collect lots of data that's of the while the build is going on and also that's while the build going on that's uh, all these data collections that's a uh, allows to us this, uh, uh, to later on reconstruct the build status and also this from this, those data collected uh, give us lots of information about the package dependencies, what package in the final images, all those kind of things. So we introduce this uh, uh, DSI data store interface as an observer. So, and then this is, yeah, listening to the BitBake server and then uh, register for many events and then the process all the events from the big big server and filter them out and parsing them into this uh, the data and then put this data into the the data store so on top of the data store we have this uh, Django based the, the web server this backend and uh, this web server backend yeah is we define this uh, uh, REST API, so this, uh, and then with this on top of this REST API, does it give us this uh, the support to the front end, does uh, to query the data, and then this uh, allows us to build on top of that this uh, the presentation parts of the data. Uh, so here are some, uh, we build this, uh, the we have the wiki page for toaster. So from here, a, it has all the information this about the toaster, the design, and also there's uh, some this, uh, the design philosophy and also there's all this full documentation that uh, uh, the design firm has done the research works on. And also this, uh, you can clone this uh, initial code of this uh, uh, yeah, toaster or web hub from here. And then to run the uh, the toaster, so currently there's a uh, it's very there's an early stage. So then there's a yeah, if people have used this uh, uh, Yakto and run this a bit by build, so there are not much that, uh, changes there. We try to keep things this as consistent and uh, yeah, not dramatic change as possible because we want people that uh, still be able to this uh. uh yeah, it's not kind of like two flavor of feedback. If you, yeah, let's use a toaster, then it's one thing and not it's different. So you still source the OE init build environment to set up your environment. And then if you want to, this, uh, uh, the data to be collected much richer, we, we depends on lots of things, uh, uh, pr the data provided by build history. So you need to add these two lines in the uh, local conf files. And then 
the next step is this now this is the changes that you need to source toaster star so this basically start the bitbake server and also the os osis that's a, uh, the the client the observer so behind the scenes and then this next is this you just uh, do this uh, uh, run the command like you do a normal build so yeah, once you build it's done. So this is one of the uh, the simple interfaces uh, with the initial. So currently, this, uh, we still haven't built up this uh, uh, the front end yet to allow give us this uh, kind of like yeah the good presentation of the data. So we just this is one of the simple this uh, HTML pure HTML file. Uh, interface allows us to really this uh, pick into the database and see the, to make sure that uh, the correct this uh, uh, the build information is provided so probably you cannot see very well but uh, if I go back here yeah so here this uh, see with this build the command line this I got a couple of warnings and it's tell me this a uh, fail to fetch URL blah 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 and then all of this, so you can see that uh, with this simple interface as a task, so those data is captured and by DSI stored in the data store and then this, through this, uh, uh, the front end API. So here reflects, I got four warnings, which is the exact same four warnings that uh, yeah, show down the command line. So this just give you the idea. And what's next? So we are this, uh, shooting for this uh, uh, early release, this uh, initial release of Toaster. That's a uh, target for first weeks of no November. So this supported all the the big big changes I just mentioned, and also this uh, includes this uh, uh, the Toaster, this uh, Django backend frameworks, the DSI, the data store, and the Django web server and the uh, REST APIs. And then this, uh, for the next, there's a one six. There's a uh, where in the, we just uh, finished up this a uh, one five release, and we're in the phase of planning one six release. So we are planning this a uh, uh, yeah taking the guidance with this inside out this approach, and then this for one six release you should have this a uh, uh, front end both the front end front end and also this a uh, uh, added features of the back end. So any questions regarding Toaster so far? Yes. We have a login for different users. We can, I mean, several users can use the same uh, web GUI to connect to the same server as if doing the build? Uh, no, that, uh, that's one of the things. So you can go to the wiki and look at this uh, research. So that's one of the as on this uh, extended functionality. So currently, this, as I mentioned, we just allows people to run the build, collect the data. So it's still, we start with a personal toaster first. Single yeah, single user mode. OK. So any other questions before I move on? Yeah. Uh, in the single user mode, you run the build still that's on the Linux, right? That you cannot run the bit big. And as I said, we are defining this a one six. This a, so currently is this a, the interface that we have the interface. So the, it's yeah, it's Django. That's a, you probably can provide this a API. It's REST API, and you can. Pro we don't have the front end, so this a, yeah. It's not what I'm saying. is not limited to this a, yeah this. So that's why we take this this a web yeah this a frameworks approach. Okay, so now this a, uh, I'm going to talk about this a, to address this a, uh, another request for this a developed anywhere. This a, a people say, what if my this a development this a environment is not Linux, and so uh, for people that know this a, with the Yakto projects, we have this uh, Eclipse plugin. And for this plugin, this, uh, we have uh, two. Uh, we support both the system developer this, uh, through this uh, 
bit big commander projects creation. So that's basically create a, a projects based on the, the metadata and then it interacts with the hub, allows you to this, uh, yeah, using within the Eclipse plugin, this, uh, edit your recipe files and the change your config and then bring up the hub and further customize your this, uh, build and run the build. And also we have the application developer side supports, which is based on the, uh, the CDT, but Yacto projects, uh, the build generates this, uh, its own, this, uh, the two chains of the SDKs are what we call the application development toolkit. So it contains the uh, cross two chain and also the sys root mar ma uh, matching this, uh, uh, the target. So it allows you to, this, uh, within the Eclipse IDE, just yeah, build your, the cross, develop your application for the target and also give you the capabilities of this uh, remote uh, deploy and debug and all of that. So our plugin is based on top of this, uh, the CDT, uh, which is CC++ this, uh, development toolkit, which is quite standard. This uh, uh, Eclipse, this uh, IDE offerings for this uh, uh, C++ developer, but for this uh, Yocto cross development environment setup. But all this mentioned is this uh, Eclipse ID is currently this only works on this uh, uh, Linux this development host. Then this, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this people says, okay, so Eclipse, this is Java. So first of all, then that's, there's the hope that it now shouldn't, yeah, there's a hope that uh, we cannot limit it to this, uh, uh, just the Linux platforms. And also there's a requirement, the requirement come from this people work within a corporate environment. So the IT setup limit there. Yeah, that's a main working environment is Windows. And also there's a developer uh, pr personal preference. That's a, yeah, it's not Linux, that's a, a development host. And also, so that's trigger us to, to really this, uh, uh, start investigate this in these requirements. So we, yeah, there's a uh, found here are the uh, the fundamental the uh, the building blocks that we can rely on give us this uh, as a proof of concept start yeah this uh, the uh, kick off this uh, uh, proof of concept and explore this uh, in this requirement one of them is this uh, Java network this uh, URI this uh, class which encapsulates all this URI key information. Yeah, the, the host, the port, the port, the pass, and the scheme. So this allows you to really hide the real, the, uh, where your files this exist, those kind of situation, and give you yeah, enough uh, information that's uh, on a remote system, you can reconstruct everything. And also this uh, Eclipse this, uh, uh, has this sub projects, the target management, the uh, remote system explorer, RSE, and it has lots of the remote resource subsystem already, and which the uh, Yakto projects, uh, we also yeah, contribute and uh, some uh, patches in that area. So it's give you this remote file, sys, uh, file subsystem, the shell, the process, the terminal. So with all of this, and it's give us this really high hope that uh, we can achieve this uh, everything Thing that's a uh, migrate this Eclipse IDE environment on a uh, non uh, uh, Linux that's uh, platforms. So then there's a uh, people. So I just mentioned that uh, we did some research and uh, have some lists. What are the kind of like existing this, uh, uh, the blocks, that's the pieces we can use or take advantage of and provide this capability. And the other thing that's uh, on, uh, in our research works is we also look at this uh, current Eclipse community that's uh, uh, offerings. So is there's any efforts that's uh, yeah, already out there, then why just improving it and start using it and explore and see this whether provide patches to that. So there are two things that uh, we've looked into. One is uh, uh, Eclipse CDT itself. So it does have the capability that allows you to create a projects on a remote machine. But then, this, as I mentioned, this, uh, we as a, a Yaktu project, so our plugin mainly relies on this, uh, the, cross, the ADT and for the auto tool based projects. So it just stops at this, uh, uh, allows you to build 
uh, create a project and it's a purely as simple as a GNOME based this uh, C project and that's it. It doesn't give you, provide you any this, uh, capabilities to do the configuration for auto tool based projects and also this, uh, there's not even this any this efforts put in to allow you to run the build at all. So that's the CDT part. And the other that's a, a turn off fact is we're trying to ping them because we saw that uh, they have this remote projects creation that's a capabilities there. And we try and see is there's any, do they have any roadmaps or anybody interested in continue this uh, um, evolving that so then this, we can plan work with them. And we just kind of like never heard anything. So it seems it's a dead end. At least it's, yeah. Who, who did you contact with there? Uh, I sensed the mailing list. This, this has been working for, for years for many companies. Like they, they have CDT on their Windows site and they, they have their build machines and uh, on Linux and the Linux targets. And so this type of setup has been working for a few years. Mm -mm. Then probably this I can get. But the other thing this is think about we have uh, three layers, kind of like so. Basically, we have the the two chain. The cross environment still needs to resides on a Linux that's a development host. That part you cannot migrate to the Windows part, right? Yeah. Then that's a, basically what I'm talking about is the main this a, a IDE environment for the developer, right? And then there's still the target. So that's the the definitely the, uh, the, the ultimate where you develop the application against, that's still for the remote target. So I'm th talking about this, uh, you do this auto tools and the CDT is using the two chains. So for the target and to build and reconfigure, there's none. Okay, yeah, no, yes, okay, since you mentioned Wind River, yeah, I, yeah we, we present this to them, and uh, yes, as you said, they do, but what they do is, it's not what we ask for, so they basically pour the whole two chains, two windows. Yeah, that's their approach, so this is not none, that's based on the existing the technology, so they basically create their proprietary solutions, there's where they sell money, the big money, that's kind of like. But I'm just talking about everything just using Yakto, open source, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should probably discuss further after. Yeah, no, th that's exactly my goal of this talk. It's not this, uh, yeah, I want to start, stir the community and then give them some pressure because I want to take the open, I'm more interested in the open source, not the enterprise, this yeah. kind of like, so approach and uh, I, reach out to them and trying to give them the use case and how far I've reached and yeah. Okay, so let me finish and then the definitely that's something, that, that's my goal of this talks, seriously. <laughs> and the other thing is this uh, Eclipse Parallel Tools Projects PTP and it has this, this the, uh, RDT, this Remote Development Tools feature. So we look in that as well and so this, this when we first this, uh, yeah, hear about them, sounds, they said their goal kind of like exactly matching what we want. But when we really start playing with it, and then the first of it is really cumbersome and it's now stable. And again, no auto tool support. And also it seems they're, uh, they're kind of like in the incubation phases and they're not following the CDT model. So even though you achieve the creative projects and run a build, and then a, you, with the CDT model, you see that it's not just stop at the build. So CDT, the whole package give you the remote deployment and remote debugging. That's kind of like the full cycle of the this remote development capabilities. And by they're not following these CDT models, then this right after you build, you're stuck there. So I reinvent the remote deployment and the remote debugging. So that's kind of like, so that's pretty much not very, not the right approach as well. And also this, uh, their incubation, they're not mainstream, not even Eclipse, this, uh, yeah, so. So we look at that and then, so we said, 
Seems, yeah, we have to roll up our own sleeves and starting doing some of this uh, dirty work, proof of concept work ourselves and see, yeah, just based on this, uh, what out there and what we can come up with. And so these are the things we have changes that are made in the uh, Yakto, this uh, plugin as part of the proof concepts and as we plow our way forward. And so first we, yeah, that's a refactor, did a major refactor of our code and uh, then this uh, create this uh, common remote util plugin. So originally with the Yakto projects, we have the remote tool support of those, but that's scattered into different this, uh, uh, plugins. So coupled with different plugins, and now we kind of like extract them out, create a standalone plugin, so more like a utility plugin. So anything that's going to this interacts with the remote is going to require this remote YouTube plugin and give you this, uh, uh, the common this, uh, core of the remote interaction. And also as we this, uh, playing things and we found this upstream bug, so we made this, uh, uh, the contributions <coughs> Yeah, we fix couple uh, the deadlock situation and also we improved this uh, many uh, in the RC this uh, uh, code as we I mentioned. So when we yeah start this uh, playing with it and build on top of it, we found this a uh, certain circumstance. There's a deadlock and also lots of things. That's a uh, yeah the the process and also the shell is this uh, relies on this uh, synchronous calls. So we really slow down things. So then we. Yeah, change the uh, uh, something that's into asynchronous, so provide this uh, robustness that we want, and also we found this a uh, lots of the existing. This uh, I think this is the key problems and of the CDD code, which I just. It's not, I don't get it. It's really this, I found the issue and I asked them. So basically, this, uh, what they have is all over the place, they are using iPads. So you know, this, the whole thing is really changing how you access files, how you access things, right? The fundamental is this, for this remote access. So they're using iPads, and iPads is only give you this, uh, uh, the local file system the access. As I mentioned, this, uh, yeah, this, uh, the URI give you, and already this, uh, there's already this uh, uh, full this kind of like URI class implementation give you this kind of like abstracts out your real this uh, location and allows you to this uh, encapsulate the location and either remote and unified the API that's the interfaces allows you to kind of like construct this. So what? The approach we take, based on that, we just starting this uh, experimenting, replacing this uh, pieces with using iPads with this location URI. So, this is what we have uh, achieved uh, so far. So uh, we can this, uh, uh, now this uh, create both this. Uh, 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 as mentioned, this, uh, the BitBay Commander projects and also this, uh, our own, this, uh, uh, the ADT, this uh, remote projects. So yeah, by this kind of like make it uh, location neutral, so either local host or remote host. So on top of RSE and also we figure out a way to do this uh, uh, remote configuration. Now this, uh, the, yeah, we are just stops at the, the build part because the build part is just we have to use the CDT, and as mentioned, there are just too, yeah, way too much iPads embedded there, and I asked them this, uh, what is the best approach. I haven't heard much uh, feedbacks or guidance that give back to me. So here I'm going to give you a quick demo of what we can do now. So as I mentioned, this, uh, for a system developer, so we have this uh, Yakto, this a uh, bit big commander project, and then there's a, you can see there's a, from the uh, presentation part, there's not much changes, and then there's a, here we just add there's a you, yeah, the capabilities, you specify what is the remote, yeah, the provider, and then there's a, you just give me the connection name, so I just use the IP address, and then, so, with that, and you browse.
So this is going to take a while, and I think I'm going to running out of time here. So basically, if you finish, and the, the project's going to build, uh, yeah, bring in this IDE for you, and then this, you just kind of continue on. What I'm saying is, it's just one very simple this, uh, interface changes and give you this, uh, yeah, capabilities to specify where you want the project's locations to be. So that's, that's uh, uh, and then as I mentioned for this, uh, uh, Oops. The projects, and so you see this. We have the plugin, this uh, uh, Yakto ADT, and this is our proof of concept. It's the same thing. This, uh, oh, I want to show you. So with this, uh, uh, the cross, the Yakto cross development environment. So all of these are very. Uh, minor changes to the interface, but allows you to specify the location. Yeah, you, you know, there's a here, there's a with the RC, the IP address allows you to specify the location where's your cross environment to be. So that's the addition we added here. And then a, if you go to here, so you change, and then there's a, again, you specify. So this uh, just creates this, uh, even though the, I give the IP of localhost, but yeah, if it's remote, it's created there. And then as, uh, you can, as I said, we achieve the remote configuration, so. Anyway, <laughs> somehow it's okay. So then this uh, is can run using this uh, uh, remote tool chains and reconfigure this kind of like yeah pro remote projects. And the next step is doing the build. It's just the build part is I pass all over the place. So as I said, this is more like a call of action of where we are, that's the uh, remaining challenges, which is the bigger, this kind of obstacle we need to overcome. So with the big, big commander projects, probably it's simpler because we're doing this, this uh, the, uh, the toaster, the web interfaces, and once it's there, that's what we can achieve. And currently, this, uh, as I mentioned, the big, big commander is launching Hub. Hub is uh, Linux tools. But on the other end, we have this build appliance, which is a virtual machine, so you can bring that to the windows and uh, use, change the metadata there, and then this, uh, yeah, connects this uh, Eclipse to that, and then this, uh, run the hub there, and against this, uh, you change the metadata and the, do the build. And so with this application development side, so, yeah, we, there's two approaches that uh, currently this, uh, uh, we can this think so we can think this, uh, but none of them is ideal. So basically, first one is change the overall the CDT code base. It is, yeah, because this, uh, currently the CDT upstream, they have no intention. I asked them this uh, iPass location URL, just switch them and provide these capabilities, but there's no response there, and they said this is not something kind of like their intent to do. The other, the option two, then we just fork the CDT implementation. So this gives us the, uh, uh, the needed changes to support that our usage model. But then, this, uh, yeah, it's definitely something hard to sustain and scale, and also this kind of like it's yeah, anytime you do a fork something, and then this is not a good solution. So that's where we are at the moment, and I'm just, if you guys think this, this is definitely the value of this uh, usage model, strong usage model for this, and which I personally truly believe into it, then probably we need to yeah, let the upstream, let the community know about it and make some noise there. 
Okay, so that concludes my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot to ask question. Oh. Question, um, why Eclipse? I mean, how many you know, ground developers probably don't use Eclipse? Uh, it's pretty crashing here and there. I mean, I, I don't have great experience with Eclipse, <laughs> so why Eclipse? Java is nice, but I think there's a, there are some people that's using the Eclipse I no, 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 Yeah. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I mean, all the major companies providing tools for this are actually based on Eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Not fun to develop, but the application developers yeah. use. So no, this, this is not Java. to develop the kernel. This is it's not only Java. No, absolutely not only Java. In my organization, roughly 200 developers are currently developing applications of that in Eclipse for v tools. And I would love them uh, to develop software on Windows. That's what our company IT gives us for Linux instead of v tools. And yeah, I think there's a for the kernel probably there's a yeah you guys have some issues. But definitely, there are lots of this, uh, yeah, Eclipse as an ID is very legit to lots of developers. And once people just using it and it's stable enough, it's, they like it. I mean, there's lots of features and also this within the ID environment, it's definitely, as I mentioned, that's kind of like much easier this for you to do the remote debugging. I, I have a coworker who says, always say, oh, I'm cool with this, yeah, this command line, but once we have to do this kind of remote debugging using this remote GDB. And he just said, oh, I need to refresh my memory how to kind of start the GDB server on the remote and how to start local. And it creates just one, yeah. yeah. It's actually worse than that because today, if you need to debug uh, a remote Linux target, you'll probably have to have, you'll have many processes running at the same time. I mean, you know, there's more and more things running in parallel. So if you're connected to many different processes at the same time with the same GDB, you want to do that from the command line, it's, it's totally crazy. I mean, you get events from all over the place and you don't actually know what's going on where. So with the UI, it, it actually shows you, okay, from which port comes and from, you know, which process and that, you know, <coughs> a bit more uh, understanding of what's going on. So there's a lot to it, actually. It's, uh, yeah. Um, and, and, and another thing that is worth mentioning maybe is that many of those things are actually coming out of the Eclipse I IDE as standalone applications. So Red Hat is doing that for the debugger. Uh, there's also another initiative in Linux tools, uh, Eclipse for the uh, tracer, so the, the um, LTPNG stuff. So it will be a standalone application like Wireshark. Yeah. So there, there's a few things to it actually. Yeah, there. Yeah, and also it's kind of like you know, Eclipse is the plug. Yeah, plugin. So you can keep continue add in the ID whatever you want. But the main thing I think is very, this, uh, I just don't know why the upstream not realize this. I know they are kind of busy adding features on the, this uh, make features more robust, but this is definitely, this make it kind of broader adoption of the idea. Yeah, no, I don't understand why this is not working today. We should really talk uh, more detail. Give it a try, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have another question. Um, do you have uh, some Effort to change uh, to support Makefile project, uh, like as um, and uh, you you only support out to. Oh project. no no no! I yeah as I mentioned, that's a, you know this. Uh, I saw this. I saw this. Uh, Timo here. Oh, he's here. Okay, yeah. As it said, this uh, this is, is a, a community project. So Timo is works for BMW Cars IT. So they provide one of those uh, yeah, really cool additions. As you mentioned, they add this uh, uh, CMake as a project support to our plugin. Okay. Yeah. But as I said, as a, with Yacht as an open source, <coughs> we want to take the open source approach. So we want to, yeah, so as Dominic says, I know that so we talk with Wind River and they even want to see this happen. So they said, oh, it's can trim down our resources on porting two chains to different platforms. Yeah. You, you can also, I mean, just do a, within the CDP itself, you can just do a, a SSH to a remote machine, do your build there, and then you 
get the results and then can click on warnings and read the Yeah, that's one, place. but then, as I said, there's a remote terminal, but that, that's yeah. not the ID. That's basically, you can do that. That's kind of on Windows, we'll see into your remote Linux and still do this thing. It's, it's a bit more than that, because when you have errors, warning, I mean, you click on it and it brings you to the right place in the source code and stuff like that. Yeah, but we just want this consistent look and feel, the feelings of mm -hmm. the whole thing. This why that's kind of like on Windows, it's just I start kind of like my mentality has changed on something else. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, the fundament, as I said, is not something hard, it's just the app has. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. And I'm with the Yaktu project, so if sorry, that's my demo somehow, that's, uh, it's not that quite working, but yeah. You can look me up if you have further questions. Thank you.